10 things Americans do the rest of the world finds weird. Yeah, looking forward to jumping into this one. Before we do, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. And I do have a Patreon where I'm posting extra content. Link is in the description. But yeah, let's jump into this to check out these 10 things. When you live anywhere long enough, it's all too easy to think that your society's customs are completely normal, even if it's considered incredibly strange uh -huh. elsewhere in the world. True. American television and movies are often shown in other countries, so the rest of the planet is exposed to the strange things that happen in the good old US of A. Right. What we got? This is going to be good. Number 10. Asking how are you when they don't actually care. <laughs> we do in that. America, there's always a lot of friendly <laughs> small talk going on in public places. These right. short conversations with cashiers, co-workers and acquaintances almost always go something like this. Hello, how are you? Then the recipient of the greeting responds so quickly it blends into almost a single word. <laughs> I'm good, how about you? I'm good, and I'm then good. the other person responds, fine, thanks. Hi, this is exactly what we do in the UK. Bro, if I ask someone how are they and they actually reply with how they're doing, I'm gonna be like, bro, <laughs> no, I'm leaving conversation. It's essentially just a very long way of saying hello. It right. is such a pre-established norm that no one even stops to question it. Yeah. In fact, if anyone actually responds to how are you with a truthful answer, the other person usually shrinks back in horror because they don't <laughs> actually want to know about how you woke up late and were late for work or maybe anything about those blasted TPS reports. Yeah, the UK version of that is like, well, my version would be, it depends like what kind of location in the UK, but it'd be, you're all right, yeah, I'm all right. That's it. Boom. You're right, you. How, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. You. They them. That's it. In other countries, they simply say hello and don't ask how the person is doing unless they're actually friends. Oh, really? Number nine, cheerleaders at sporting events. Other countries okay, think yeah. that all competitive sports need are a lot of protein, water, and cardio, and then the team can succeed. But Not in America! They've apparently got it all wrong. Americans <laughs> know that what they really need to win a game are cheerleaders. Of course, it wouldn't be possible to win if the prettiest girls in the school weren't cheering for the players. It's so True. strange to other countries that they'll see an American television show or a movie and think, surely that's just an oversexualized trope that's not actually real. Yeah, no, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna put my hands up. That was me. That was me. Like, I've seen cheerleaders all the time. I've watched, like, all the movies, all the shows, and you see cheerleaders everywhere. But I didn't think it actually happened. And then I found it actually happened. I was like, oh, wow. Well, no, it is very real, and it's at virtually every high school and college in the USA. Wow. Cheerleading isn't just a fun pastime for the sidelines of football games, either. It has become... Then again, you know, in the UK, you can actually join cheerleading groups. Like, it's not very common, but they are some because I know of some people that actually did cheerlead it. I don't know if it was like at schools or stuff. I don't know. It was like a, it was like a different, I don't, I don't know what they did it for. I think it was like competition or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe it was dad's group. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember that. A competitive sport of its own where girls and boys train in gymnastics and dance. There are even huge competitions on state and national levels where cheerleaders can compete for prizes and scholarships. Number eight, pharmacies are basically convenience stores. In other parts of the world, a pharmacy is called the chemist because it's okay, yep. just that. It's a place to pick up your medications. But in the United States, a I'm pretty sure I call it pharmacy, but I think people in the UK do call it chemist. Pharmacy is basically a convenience store. You can buy makeup, snacks, drinks, I want to see one in America. And just about anything else you can think of. Many of the major pharmacy chains like CVS, Rite Aid, and Walgreens are even open 24 7 just in what? case you need something in the middle of the night. Night. Even though it's called a pharmacy, the actual medicine counter to pick up your prescriptions is all the way in the back of the store, which forces you to walk through the aisles to get your medicine. Oh, Plus, of, course. of course. Yeah, yeah, they want, they want you to get the good good. So you'd rather get your prescription medicine at the drive through which isn't something you'll see in other countries either. Many other countries do not Mad. even have drive throughs for their fast food chains. And then you'll get your med Mad, he just said drive through for pharmacy, bro. That's crazy. You guys have drive through bangs, drive through, bro. It's actually mad. You guys live a very, very, very... Easier livable life, do you know what I'm saying? I would love to just drive through and pick up everything. I can't be bothered to go in the stores, do you know what I mean? Medicine. Can't bother. Unless, of course, you'd rather get your prescription medicine at the drive through which isn't something you'll see in other countries either. Many nah. other countries do not even have drive throughs for their fast food chains, let alone the place where they pick up their drugs. <laughs> Number seven, wearing pajamas in public. When you, you know what? UK is actually. It is kind of similar to America. You don't see pajamas. Actually, no, 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 no. It's not that common. But people do wear pajamas. Especially, maybe I'm saying it more so than others because my sister always did. 
<laughs> she would always go to the shop in her pajamas. So, yeah. But you don't see it. Nah, nah, nah. Now nah, when I'm thinking about it, I never see people in pajamas. My sister was just... She was just living her American dream. <laughs> when you're on a college campus or in the suburbs, it's not uncommon to see Americans walking around in their pajamas or sweatpants. Okay. Whether it's someone who is out late at night to grab something at Walmart or a student who's yeah. rolling out of bed and showing up to class. Oh, at uni, everyone was in pajamas everywhere. At uni, they were. We're like going to the shops as if you see it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So my sister and at uni. Everyone has an excuse as to why they think pajamas in public are okay. The idea behind this is that American people care more about personal comfort, and most people sympathise with it. Some I American like people that. truly That's don't cool. care if you see them in their pajamas. In fact, if you are living outside of a city and you get too dressed up to go out in public, people will stare at you and wonder why you're trying so hard to look good. In oh, other really? countries, people always get dressed before they leave the house. It's pretty much completely unheard of to leave the house unless you're looking presentable, and if they're not presentable everyone assumes that there's something seriously wrong well for the past 15 years of my life people must have thought there was something seriously wrong with me <laughs> because i went out a lot of the time looking disgusted i just went i could be closed man also, just add a personal note here that I think, like at some UK universities, people would be wearing pajamas to class. That's what when I said. I was at university, it definitely happens. Not on a big scale, though. That's why I said people. Be, yeah, people are looking rough at uni, bro. Everywhere they're looking rough, man. They don't care. I didn't care. Maybe uh, people let me know in the comments if that's still a thing. Number six: smiling at strangers. Indeed, in most countries around the world, if you smile at a stranger, it's because you're flirting with them. But in America, it's considered <laughs> almost necessary to smile and politely acknowledge another person's existence. Okay. This is especially true for women who are often harassed on the street by men who will tell them to smile more. This can <laughs> even happen in the workplace where people are told by their co-workers or bosses that they aren't smiling enough. What? Not all Americans do this, though. In major cities on the East Coast, like New York City, people are so busy that they don't bother to acknowledge one another. So introverts can breathe a sigh of relief that they don't have to worry about being rude yeah i ain't gonna lie that's so true bro in the uk right if um if someone smiles at you you definitely go in they fancy me they they right there they fancy me because they just like it will happen but mainly in the uk you just like if you're gonna like acknowledge someone you probably just give like a nod or like may maybe it depends it depends on the situation really but it don't happen that much like I, I can't remember the last time I actually went out and some random stranger just smacked just went like looked at me went <laughs> Smiling at strangers is far more prevalent among suburban white people whose parents told them to be friendly. For this reason, it's been called the awkward white person smile. Really? It's when you make eye contact <laughs> with another person and you feel obligated to smile. But you're not actually smiling, so it turns into this weird sort of closed mouth curve of your lips. In the southern <laughs> states, people will actually smile and talk to you, so be prepared for an onslaught of friendliness. Okay. It's a real thing. Right. Number five, jumbo sizes. In America, Big every sizes. fast food chain has an option to upgrade your meal into oh. a super size or jumbo size option. They make it even easier to indulge in more food by making these size upgrades just a few more. Listen, I can cope with the food in the UK because you can just get like an extra burger or extra size or whatever, right? I'm mainly talking about McDonald's here, but. I don't want two drinks, you know what I'm saying? But I want a bigger drink. I would love a jumbo size drink. Cents more expensive than the normal size, even with the standard sizes of small, medium, Wait, and large, few what? more or jumbo size option. They make it even easier to indulge in more food by making these size upgrades just a few more cents more expensive than the normal size, even with the standard sizes of small, medium, what? and large. America has the biggest McDonald's cups compared to everywhere else in the world, with the exception of Canada's large cup, by the way. Even wow. a small size soda is more than the daily recommended amount of sugar for a healthy diet, and yet Americans feel cheated if they don't get to drink tons of it. Well, listen, listen, at least you're hitting your daily goal. And then the next day, and some. <laughs> also expect free refills, which people take advantage of because, well, it's free, so why not? Other countries are... Bro, you guys get it good over there, man. I don't care. You guys get it too good. Around the world do not give free refills. Nope. And they do not give their customers incentives to pay for larger size portions. Yeah, this nope. is one of the many reasons why obesity rates in the US are some of the highest in the world. Wait, Number how are people so fat in the UK then? What's going on here? Because we don't get jumbo sizes. We just get, we just get, um, you can get, can you get small? You can get, you can get regular or large at McDonald's. I don't think there's a small. 
Is that small? I don't know. It might be a small. But yeah, small fries, small drink. Yeah. Yeah, but if you get a small, you, like. Yeah, yeah, I don't know anyone that gets small. <laughs> if you get a small, that's weird, bro. Before leaving tips. In the United States, it's customary to give a tip to servers in restaurants as well right. as delivery people and pretty much everyone who's doing a service-based job. Okay. For foreigners visiting the country, they're often confused about who they need to tip and who they don't, and it becomes very baffling and expensive. Yeah. And I can absolutely testify that this is true. Also, you go into a restaurant and the price on the menu is not what you end up paying once you've done the service and the tax and all of this stuff. Very different. Wait, in most why? countries around Sales the world, tax. people working in the service industry are actually being paid a living wage, so it's not necessary to tip them. In fact, people from other countries are often shocked to find out that waiters in American restaurants make less than the minimum wage and that the customers are expected to pay the rest of their salary so that they can actually survive. It's really quite a bizarre thing to wow. a foreigner. To well, make that's matters worse, many tips. of the waiters and waitresses do not get to keep their tips in full when they do an exceptionally good job. Tips are usually collected together and split evenly among employees so that cooks and busboys get some of the money too that is actually true wait did he say that's in america but uh, well it, it, either way in the uk a lot of people don't tip because it is split within the company and when you want to tip in the uk you want to tip that person because they're they've been nice to you right and you like that person because hey listen newsflash in the uk not everyone in the service are nice bro and you don't want to tip them a lot of them will walk around just like with a face like this. Can I get you anything? You know what I'm saying? So like, why would you want to tip them? But you want to tip someone nice? So like, yeah, it's, uh, it, could be, uh, it could be weird in the UK. It definitely can. Number three, using red solo cups at parties. Yet another trope in TV and movies about the American now. high school and college experience it. is those red plastic solo cups that you see everywhere. Yep. And just right now, I learned that these are called solo cups. Just like cheerleading, there are people in other countries who aren't sure if this is a real thing or if it's just a badly written cliche. I totally <laughs> assumed it was. The fantastic. idea behind drinking out of a red plastic cup at a party is that no one can tell what you are drinking. If the cops show up, who's to say you're not just drinking soda? Oh. This became popular among underage drinkers at college parties and it continues to be an American staple to this very day. They even make tiny shot glass sized versions of red solo cups. I guess when the police okay. show up, you just tell them that you really prefer tiny portions. <laughs> On top of the cups concealing what's inside, it's cheap to buy plastic cups in bulk and save them for parties. If things get crazy, it's also not possible to break these cups and they're often used for games of beer pong right, as well. Yeah. Other countries find this they're so good. funny that we do throw American themed parties sometimes and we do use the red cups. Number you know what? We've copied you so hard because like a few uh, months ago, I actually was drinking out of red solo cups and I did play beer pong as well. And they're just so American and it felt so good. <laughs> it felt so, we need to copy more stuff from you guys. To overzealous patriotism. American flags are plastered. Whoa, 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 what? Overzealous patriotism, what? Cups. Number two, overzealous, overzealous patriotism. American flags are plastered all over the US. They right. are outside of homes, in front of public buildings, and even on the back of pickup trucks. It okay. seems normal to most Americans to show some national pride. They see it as being grateful for living in a country that allows them to enjoy the freedoms that other countries don't allow. And if you refuse to salute the flag or stand up for the national anthem, it's practically an act of treason. In fact, the NFL what? now takes it so seriously that if players refuse to stand during the national anthem, their team will receive a fine for not showing ample amounts of patriotism. What? But for people from other countries, this is overzealous national pride and it's really quite bizarre. In the United Kingdom, the Union Jack is rarely ever seen except for national holidays. True. People don't That's hang true. the national flag anywhere in their homes and they are not constantly singing the national anthem or saluting the flag on a daily basis either. Yeah, that is so true. Like, it is very rare to see one the only time i see my own country flag is during like the world cup for football and i've seen the english flag but that's that's about it in fact i can attest i don't even know the words to the uk national anthem Neither do I. number one the drinking age i know a little bit of it but i don't know it all the drinking age is 21. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy. You can do so much stuff before 21. Age is 21. That's crazy. In most countries, the drinking age is just 18 years old. But after yeah. all, if you're old enough to vote for the next president or go to war to die for your country, why can't you have a drink? <laughs> the drinking age was raised to 21 after the passing of the National Minimum Drinking Age Act of 1984. If anyone is caught giving someone under the age of 21 alcohol, it's taken very seriously wow. and it's considered corrupting a minor. Everyone knows what? that high school and college kids are breaking the law but teachers still try to stop it before every prom night but you're 
It's 18 because you're classed as an adult at 18, no? So when you're an adult, you can decide for yourself. Most high schools in the US have a crashed car sitting on the lawn of their school. Wait, will mock car crash at Bucks High School keep kids from drinking and driving? Well, that's seriously morbid. Some towns have even got Wait, crashed huh? carts, so teachers still try to stop it. Before every prom night, most high schools in the US have a crashed cart sitting on the lawn of their school. That's what? seriously morbid. Some towns have even gone so far as to stage a mock crash with blood and all to show students what happens when you drink and drive. Again, extra morbid. Well, yeah, no, no, no. Drinking and driving is dumb, right? Drinking it, drink it below 21, I, I, I think you should be able to drink at 18. But drinking and driving should be done at any age, bro. That is actually dumb. The logic behind this is that at 18, most people are still in high school and they are seen as being too young and stupid to be trusted with the responsibility. <laughs> By age 21, though, most young adults are either in college or working their first full-time job, so they right, okay. might think twice about okay. screwing up their life. Makes so I really sense. hope you found that video interesting. I sure I did. wonder what the stats are for, like, young drunk drivers and stuff like that. Like, UK compared to America, we can drink at 18, you guys drink at 21. I wonder, like, if we have worse stats than you lot because we can drink earlier. That, that'd be interesting, actually. Let me know if there's any other things that you guys can think of that you think I might find weird. It'll be really interesting to check them out in the comment section. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm posting extra content on my Patreon page, and you can also direct message me over there if you want to have a conversation. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.